Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, another progress update video. A um, couple of things uh, I'm going to cover in this video, uh, one of which I didn't cover in the last one for whatever reason. I, I probably just purely forgot. Um, and then a couple of new um, uh, changes since the last video. So let's get into this build. <clears throat> Okay, so one of the things that I should have covered in the last build and or in the last video and I, I didn't was um, uh, I added a new UI element called wrap. Um, let me go into badge support and let's see. And I've shown off this test theme in a, in a previous video, but this is every um, every conceivable badge that's available uh, to Big Box and obviously the theme creator. And as you can see, I've got them um, vertically listed. Okay, now with the new wrap UI element, you can do things a little different. So I'm going to place it here. And I'm just going to cheat. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> that would have been cool. Um, I'm just going to drag some of these badges into the uh, wrap element. And so far, it doesn't look any different to uh, what you're used to seeing. But once you've selected the wrap UI element and scroll down, there's actually an orientation uh, property, which defaults to vertical. If I change it to horizontal, they're laid out like so, okay? But notice when I reduce the width of the wrap UI element, so as you can see, this gives you the ability, especially if it's laid out horizontally, to say, you know, I can only fit, let's say three items of equal size, let's say, um, on the first row, and anything beyond that will go on to the next row and the next row and so on and so forth. So um, I just wanted to show this off. It was actually there in the, in uh, the previous build um, for the previous video, but I completely forgot to show you this. So that might uh, might be very useful. And I'll just go back to vertical and see what happens when I reduce the, the height. Okay. So I just wanted to show that off. Um, all right, so this build all about wheels, primarily. Okay, so let's let's get into uh, where we're at with that. And what I'll do, I'll go into this test theme. There was a an individual on the forum, uh, I believe it was Exodus CL, that was asking whether or not it's possible to change the default placement of the selected wheel item over to the left and as you can see the way I've marked it up on here I have it on the left let's pick a different game here just so that we can see yeah so the selected wheel item as you can see here is showing its associated uh, video okay game video all right. Um, so how did I do this? And let's make sure that the audio is actually off.
It's fid fiddly. I've got two monitors uh, above and below. I'm going to trip in the uh, the second monitor. There you go. Um, I definitely don't want audio. All right. Um, so if I click on wheel. And let me just, uh, for the time being, hide the selected item video, just so that we can focus on the wheel. <clears throat> so I've added more properties to the to the wheel itself, or I thought I had. Would help. Okay. So I've added camera position and uh, curve amount and uh, endless item size item spacing all these properties i've added i think since since the last video or at least if they were there on screen they're actually uh, functioning now okay so the trick to moving the selected item um, uh, selected wheel item was to simply just change the camera position okay all right so it's default of zero and if i just re-engage the selected item video then we know which one's playing i believe it's the default the center one here on amusha prince of persia yep yeah. so it's back to its default um, setting all right, so that's all you need to do is just play around with the camera position here. Um, and then I placed a, uh, rec uh, a frame over the top of this space. And with the, the beauty of having uh, zoom in, zoom out, you can see, you know, exactly. I mean, obviously, I've got animation on but if I switch it off then you can clearly see if you've got the perfect border around um, the wheel item okay so that's all I'm doing there <clears throat> and then what I did I added uh, rectangles to the left and to the right of the selected uh, wheel item and gave it this uh, gradient fade okay so it would get darker towards the edges of the view okay and it wouldn't be as uh, bright as the selected item okay the selected item is always brighter everything else is a little bit dimmer and then you get close to the edge and it's almost black so that's that's what i've done here now i'll, I'll go back to um you know my typical plain and simple um, theme and we'll go into you know more of the specifics of what I've done and where I'm going with this all right so let's just cover some more of the the wheel properties because I've actually got horizontal vertical and wall uh, uh, wall views all set up to use the new wheel. Again, I click on the wheel <clears throat> and I'll just hide the uh, game wheel index for the time being just so that we can focus on the on the wheel here. Okay, and again, I've got it defaulting to the center. I mean, that's how the theme was set up initially. But again, you know, if I if I want the uh, selected uh, the wheel uh, selected wheel item to be directly under the uh, uh, the box front here, again, it would be the same same kind of trick a bit much 
Let's see if it's. I'm kind of guessing. It's about center. Um, and one thing I need to point out is as you've moved the camera uh, one way or another, you have to offset the number of items being displayed. So the visible count, I've got it set to 17. Well, it was 17 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay roundabout so that would be a total of 12 how many do i actually see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then one off screen is 12. if you don't compensate for um the visible count what will happen is and i think i can show it here this will happen so I don't believe I'm at the end of the list. Yeah. So we're short by two. Okay. So I had it set to 17 before. I like some kind of overlap off screens so that, um, you know, cached images or images being generated are happening off screen. And then when you scroll, they'll be brought in uh, no problem uh, with the other remaining images being loaded up and, and cache ready for display at some point okay so i just want to make that absolutely clear as you're moving the camera position um you have to offset uh the visible count as well and and you'll see that there's something wrong um if uh if you're seeing items missing from the right or the left depending on where you're placing the camera um, the other property too is endless so I believe on the Nintendo Switch unless they've changed their user interface where you have um, uh, a vertical game uh, selection list and it, it, um, it doesn't wrap so it's not like on a on a, a cylinder it, it goes from one end to the other it stops and then you, you go all the way you traverse all the way back to the left I believe that's how it was working or it was for me when I first got a switch but anyway um, you can do the same thing disengage endless and I'll go to the right and as you saw I hit the end and it's not showing the first, second, third, fourth game in the list. Okay, so that's what Endless does. It, it basically kind of goes to the end and then you advance one more, it will wrap around to the beginning. Instead of this continuous uh, loop of uh, entries, be it platforms or be it games. Okay, like this. So this was the last game in the list. This is the first game in the list. All right. Right. So what else have I been working on? Well, I mean, you can uh, change the, uh, the item size here. Okay. And then uh, the selected item, you can make it bigger. Okay, uh, you've got uh, spacing, and I'll go more into that on the, the wall view, but it works just fine on here too. If I clear that, that's the default. And of course you may not want that. I mean, it's all up to how you want to lay this out. And uh, let's see. Let's come out of here. Let's go into wall games. Or wall view. 
And again, I'm using the same um, wheel item style. Okay, it's a fixed portrait um, using uh, the, uh, the the front of the game box. And everything else being kind of dimmed down, but only the selected item is is uh, nice and bright. <clears throat> so one of the things I did tweak on this since the last video, when you know, um, was that if I'm navigating up and down on this particular column, and then I click down again, it would still remain in that column, but go to the very first row within that column. Um, if I had attempted to do this in the previous video, it would have, I don't know, I think the, the item would have jumped all the way over here or something. So anyway, I got the navigation all kind of worked out. It works just fine. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, uh, spacing of items here. If I just move the controller here and let's go down here and see what we got. So we got item spacing and again I can zoom in and we've got it like bang on here. They're, each wheel item is butted right up against each other uh, horizontally and vertically. Okay, You can see that with this one pixel line divider uh, between each of them. And that's what I wanted. Um, but again, you know, I need to remember this. <laughs> I'll just change the default. So that changed the um, uh, horizontal spacing. But, uh, you know, maybe I want to change it like so. Okay, and let's zoom all the way out. I mean, it really all depends on what you want. I liked it the way it was, but that's just me. Okay. All right, so that's wall view. And then we have uh, vertical. And again, I'm using the same item style Okay, this fixed size portrait. I just kept it consistent throughout the, the theme, but you don't have to do that. You can have different styles per view. It's entirely up to you what you want to do and how you want to display them. And I'll get more into that in a sec. So again, um, on this one, uh, I didn't change anything really other than uh, the item size. Um, and that was it. You know, the visible count. Um, and even the visible count is a bit much because I can only physically show three on here. But um, that was probably just a carryover from one of the, the previous views. But yeah, again, if I zoom in, I wanted uh, the selected item. Uh, all, all the wheel items to be kind of butted right up against each other, um, having a, a single pixel divide in them. And that's what I've done there. All right, so where am I at with uh, wheels? So I've got most of the properties in. And... Um, Obviously, you can style these, uh, as I had demonstrated in a in my last video. Um, and then I had some thoughts after the last video. Um, I don't really like the idea of um, you guys having to code how you want the wheel item to be defined and and look and. Um, it could potentially cause some issues while you're 
working it out, I guess, or as you're designing it within the theme creator. And uh, that wasn't my ultimate roadmap anyway. Um, my roadmap was and is uh, to be able to go into this modifier here, similar to custom images, be able to click on wheel template and go in, change your canvas to you know whatever it may be, whatever your width and height is for how you want the wheel item to look. Give it some descriptive text. You know, this is a 500 by 700 fixed portrait. I intend to show clear logos. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any um, UI elements to really kind of show um, at the moment. I was just playing around with um, uh, ellipses and rectangles because I wanted to make sure that you know I've got the the, the primary. Um, uh, co-generation in place so um, so it would be similar to the custom image um, or similar to how you go ahead and create custom images okay you have your canvas the only addition here is that I've given you the ability to enter notes to describe what um, this template is all about and then uh, the size to content would allow so you would define the width and height just so that you can operate within that canvas but when you've enabled size to content it will ignore the width and height that you've specified and it will basically shrink the wheel item to become the width and height of whatever elements are being uh, displayed within it okay so it makes it makes it variable because we have clear logos that are obviously variable in width and height and maybe that's how you want the uh, the wheel items to react is to just expand and contract depending on what's being loaded into them anyway um, that's what I was kind of playing around with there. Um, so what does that mean? It means that you can define it here. You can see what the wheel item would look like. Um, you would be able to add your images and effects and uh, some animations to your wheel item, depending on what you're trying to achieve. And then you would just go ahead and save or not save. Yeah. All right, so assuming we are saved. As you can see, I've got two wheel items defined here. Okay, so, and that's because I save them at some point. And then it's just a case of just going back to um, in this case, like a game view, I go in here, <clears throat> I click on the wheel, scroll down, and go down to wheel item, and it's currently set to source, and obviously this is where we've got all the, you know, the our own XAML code, but if you use template, it knows that we have two game wheel item templates out there defined for this theme. So if I pick wheel one, it will tell me, it will bring in the designer notes so I know what it's pertaining to. So it's fixed portrait, five by seven, clear logo, fine. You know, uh, select game wheel item two. And does that have the same? Probably has the same notes attached to them. They're probably clones, I just made them look different. And then the idea being would it um, it would just simply leverage the code generated for those templates and then you would see the wheel items um, as normal and then that way it takes you out of the uh, out of the process of finding 
somebody else's wheel item code or trying to build your own wheel item code and um, and so on and so forth. So that was my plan all along was to um, be able to allow you to create your own wheel items um, or customize your, your wheels and have the preview on the screen. That was that was the intent for 2.4 of uh, the theme creator. And then 2.5 was to allow the ability to go into wheel item templates and define uh, what you want those wheel items to look like. Um, and then that way you wouldn't have to know how to write XAML or understand XAML. Uh, you're just purely designing it visually. Um, that was always the intent. However, after doing the last video, I realized it was heavily reliant on um, understanding XAML um, and, and, and if you wanted to kind of tweak up an existing example and then add some stuff to it you would have to understand XAML in order to do that um, and I didn't really like that idea so um, what I was planning on releasing for 2.4 I'm actually releasing 2.5 so I'm actually working on the next step of <laughs> my roadmap um, and releasing it a lot sooner than I had intended um, just because I, I don't want people really building native XAML for something where I should be providing the ability to generate that XAML for you all right so that's it's going to take a little bit longer than I anticipated but I think I think the end result will be um, a lot more beneficial to those of you out there that have no intention of, of dealing with uh, coding um, or you know you're willing to give it a go but it's just frustrating as hell to get it to work or understanding where the problem are uh, where the problem is if it's not displaying the wheel at all because there's some error uh, within it so I just want to kind of avoid that completely um, and, and have this uh, wheel item uh, designer um, template for you all right so that's that's where we're at with with wheels um, hopefully you were able to kind of follow me uh, with where I was going with this obviously I'm not going to ditch the ability to um, uh, add your own XAML code and bypass um, bypass the uh, wheel item template completely. If you don't wish to use this, that's fine. And if you just want to drop your own uh, XAML source in for the wheel item, absolutely. Um, that will, I'll still support that. Um, I'm not going to remove it. So I'm, I'm giving you both options. Um, go your own path or use a, a, a predetermined you know set of UI elements that you can uh, leverage to make up your own wheel item and uh, it will be it will display whatever you were intending it to display within the theme creator and obviously in big box all right um, the the caveat or the downside by using your own user source or your own source code for the wheel item is that um, it would then be say for example in or, or at least in the examples I'm providing here is that and I think I covered this in the last video so in my source code for these wheels I'm saying I want to show the um, the front cover of, of the game box okay and and it's doing it and it's doing it only for PlayStation 2 because those were the images cached when I last opened Big Box. Now, if I were to switch over to a different platform, I don't have those cached images. Okay. So that's that's the downside by using your own source. So the idea being by going into using the, the wheel item template designer is that 
it knows what mode I'm in. It knows that I'm in the theme creator design mode and it will make sure that the images that you've uh, added to the template are going to display and then um, so you don't get the issue that I just showed you that there's no cached images so we'll be guaranteed to show you um, the images and then when it publishes the theme the code that it generates will be in line with what you're actually seeing here okay so it's a more streamlined version um, so that's that's the the kind of pros and cons I guess of, of using um, uh, user source versus the, the templates but like I said both options are available for you to use and that's it that really kind of concludes the the wheel side of things um, there was one more thing that I'm going to show um, it's it's been a hidden feature for the longest time um, but I wanted to make it uh, more well I, I, I wanted it to everyone to know about this um, so if I just open up uh, the theme So for your theme project now, it will automatically create a subfolder called views. And there's a readme file in here. So uh, place big box supplemental files here. These files will be copied to the final published thing. Um, a couple of uh, XAML files that kind of style certain things. I think the thumbnails uh, for recents and favorites, uh, game favorites and game uh, recent games. Um, if you've got particular styling uh, XAML files for those, you can just drop them in here, drop them in this subfolder. And once you've done that and you hit publish, all of this stuff, so all the, the XAML files get published or generated, then published. And then it will look in that subfolder called views. And if it finds any XAML files in there, it will then copy those forward uh, into Big Box. And therefore, you don't have to kind of publish something and then go over to the, the Big Box themes folder and then start manipulating some of the content. You can actually do it directly um, from here um, and, and set up and set up your um, your theme from here. All right, so that was another thing that I added. I mean, it's been there for a couple of years, but meant that you had to actually create the folder, the subfolder uh, views, um, and then populate it. And if you did that, the code behind the scenes would see that and it would do all the necessary copying. All I'm doing now is just giving you visibility that the view subfolder actually exists uh, and there's a readme file in there just so that you know what it's used for um, just for visibility's sake if you wish to take advantage of it all right so um, yeah that's that's where I'm at I've, I've still got a long ways to go obviously you saw the the crashing I'm still working on the uh, the wheel item template uh, creator uh, the code generation uh, for that um, if you're curious at all how all this Kind of uh, works or why it's taken so long for me to get a video out since the last one well i actually had to change the code generator so the code generator now does multi-pass um, so for example if i were to resize this window it's actually regenerating the xaml code that allows this view to operate and that's nothing new it's always done that um, but it's actually got multi-pass in there now. So what it does, it says, okay, I've got this view, horizontal wheel two games view. Uh, does it use a wheel? It does. Does the wheel um, use a wheel item template? Um, and in this case, it doesn't. It uses source code. But if it was using a wheel item template, what it would do is create the XAML code for that wheel item template first 
and then when it generates the XAML code for this view it will then take the wheel code that it first generated and then embed it and apply it to the view that's referencing that wheel item template so it's actually in in those cases it will actually do two source code generations for that one view all right so um, I had to kind of finagle the <laughs> the code generator a little bit to, to make that work uh, so it had like a dependency um, a dependency um, uh, source code generator um, in place but it seems to be working just fine um, I mean I've tested it with that wheel item template I can see that it's embedded two ellipses and one rectangle into the code um, I mean that's that doesn't really mean anything but I just wanted to make sure that what I was expecting to see uh, would actually be generated for the wheel item and it was doing it just fine so the the multi-pass uh, source code generation works just just fine um, and like I said all along I've been making performance changes to um, to the main wheel uh, sorry <laughs> the main window and the editor to make room for additional processing because I saw the need for at least more than one pass to generate source code um, uh, you know I saw that coming so you know you, you uh, in order to in order to uh, uh, you know increase uh, complexity or functionality it's it's gonna it's gonna be uh, incurring a delay um, on top of any kind of performance uh, issues that I may have had so by reducing the performance issues or eliminating them then I'm making room for um, you know a very small delay because it's doing extra work and then therefore you know we're, we're still out on top that was that was the plan all along um, but uh, yeah there you have it that's uh, that's where I'm at with this particular um, update um, I plan to obviously get a lot further ahead uh, over the over the next coming weeks with wheels um, and, and if you've got some ideas or you've got some questions you know or you want to kind of mock something up um, of is this wheel possible within the theme creator or or and or in big box uh, feel free uh, send those uh, questions to myself and Farron um, on the uh, launch box forum and uh, make sure we've got it all covered okay um, because for me I'm leveraging big box control so as long as big box supports whatever you want it to do then there's no reason why I can't support that all right so I need to you know I you know I need to um, I need, I need to be able to support this control 100% um, anyway that's that's where we're at uh, hope you like what you see and where it's progressing uh, minus the crashes obviously but it's still in development um, but yeah we'll we'll be jumping straight to version 2.5 skipping 2.4 completely uh, because 2.5 is is providing the ability to define your wheel items so on a future video if you see we suddenly go to version 2.5 now you know why 2.4 was wheel preview and um, just dropping in your your own wheel item source and then 2.5 was to take that a lot further and define being able to design visually your wheel item itself I don't want to mess with I don't want you guys to mess with uh, XAML code so we're going straight to 2.5 all right um, well that's it that's uh, the end of the video so uh, give it a couple of weeks and hopefully I'll make a, a, a lot more progress and uh, with um, uh, you know a lot more to show off all right so until then take care everyone uh, see you in a couple of weeks